Mine does. That works. Is it on? Okay. Seems okay. Yeah. It's just hard to. All right, so let's begin. This is the Thursday, September 28, 2017, um, Board of Directors meeting of the Ann Arbor Area Transportation Authority. The quorum is present and we'll begin. Uh, opening items number 1A, uh, we need to move to uh, adopt the agenda. Before we do, though, I'd like to make one amendment, which is item 5C, which is the election of officers. I'd like to move that up to make that item 2C. I know it's not a consent agenda item, but given the fact that we have a fairly lengthy agenda and uh, this is something that has to be done tonight, I thought we would move it up to make sure we cover it. Uh, no, but the other nominating committee member is here, so we've got coverage. Any other additions, amendments, modifications to the agenda? All those in favor then of the agenda as amended, raise your hand. Or I guess we need to move it. Some, can somebody move the agenda? Sorry. Roger, support, Jillian. All those in favor? Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, item 1B, I would like to ask somebody to act as acting secretary for this particular meeting. Can I get somebody to volunteer? Jillian, thank you. <laughs> item 1C, uh, this is the public comment period, so we'll open the um, microphone at the podium for public comment. Uh, you have up to three minutes. Please uh, state your name for the record if you're going to address the public. Yeah. Not seeing anybody then, we'll move to item 1D, general announcements. Any general announcements from anybody on the board? Mr. Cooper. First, I'm going to test if the mic works. <laughs> so the, just a simple general announcement in terms of uh, railroad and public transportation, the Ann Arbor Station Draft Environmental Assessment Report is available for public review. A uh, copy is available in this building at the library as well as in City Hall, physical copy. It's also on the project website at uh, a2gov.org. Um, Wanted to let the board know that we're convening a series of committee meetings on October 11th, and there will be a public meeting, uh, open meeting to take comment on October 12th uh, in the juror assembly room at City Hall. It's on the fourth floor in the Justice Complex, starting at 6.30 p.m. Uh, you're all welcome to join, as well as those at home. Uh, it's a really um, important project. Uh, for both railroad and local public transportation because it has uh, intermodal components that are not uh, currently existent within the community. Thank you. Thank you. Any other general announcements? Uh, I'd like to make one announcement, which is uh, this is the first board meeting for Forrest Yang. Is he back there? Mm -hmm. There he is. Uh, Forrest, maybe you want to just introduce yourself and uh, your new role with the with the agency if you don't mind Try here. <coughs> thank you Eric uh, I'm very glad to be here and um, my role is the manager of service development I'm overseeing the service planning um, bus stops and scheduling and grant related uh, things so as you probably most of you know and I used to be working in Canada. Uh, I know a lot of transit systems in Canada, but learning a lot here. So I'm glad to uh, work with a great team, very welcoming community. So far, I have all about a positive experience. So thank you, Eric. Thank you. And it only goes uphill from here, I just want you to know. 
Any other general announcements? Okay. Uh, we'll move then to item 2A, an approval of the consent items, approval of minutes from the August 17, 2017 board meeting, which are in your packet. Can I have somebody move those into the record? Mr. Hewitt, seconded by Ms. Sims. Any additions or modifications to the minutes? Jillian? Do this as consent? Yeah. We certainly uh, do. Um, we have compared this, I believe, against uh, one generated by the city. I'm looking at Karen. Not for next year. Okay. So it's possible there could be uh, a conflict. If there is, uh, we'll certainly approach the board about rescheduling any particular meeting. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Cooper's on it. He's, he looks like he's looking it up right now. All right. So can I move those two, have somebody move those two items into the record? Mr. Alamein, supported by Mr. Hewitt. All those in favor of the minutes and the meeting schedule as drafted, raise your hand. Any opposed? Right, those are adopted, thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't ask you right. Right, one abstention, which is Sue, for the record. Sorry, I'm going a little too fast with this. Uh, then item 2C, uh, according to the amended agenda, will be election of officers. And I will turn it over to Ms. Gainsley to uh, present thank that. You, thank you. Um, so Jack and, uh, and I sat on the nominations committee. Um, Jack, as, as everyone knows, loves to sit on the nominations committee so that he doesn't get nominated for anything. Um, I failed on both counts getting myself nominated both to the nominations committee and actually ending up nominating myself as an officer so <laughs> I have a lot to learn um, and so our nominating committee um, would like to nominate um, a fairly consistent set of officers um, for this year um, partially with the the idea in mind of um, continuing the policy governance um, the the since it's fairly recent that we put this policy governance in place, um, we were hoping to maintain some consistency. Um, so we were, are going to nominate um, Eric as chair, myself as secretary, and Eli as treasurer. Um, those are the, the suggestions of the nominations committee. Don't, don't, don't look so enthusiastic. Um, <laughs> Uh, and But I should note that we're doing this with uh, um, mind to the fact that Eric and I are both um, nearing our, the ends of our terms on the board, uh, and so we're um, potentially looking at a mid-year um, re-election uh, and, and uh, looking at, at other board members who might be interested in stepping up to that. So the conversation is still open, but for the purposes of tonight, that is the slate that we would like to nominate. And I believe we do have to go through these one at a time to elect them one at a time. So um, do you want to lead off the nominations or one at a time? I've done that. Uh, so uh, uh, first of all, to nominate Eric as chair. Okay. So nominate. Do we have a second? Support. Support. Okay. Any other candidates from the floor? All those in favor of them, raise your hand. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, great. A second nomination uh, is uh, Eli Cooper as the treasurer. Okay. Another second? Mr. Hewitt? <laughs> Any other candidates? <laughs> okay. All those in favor then of Eli as treasurer? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
And finally? Uh, and finally, I will nominate myself as uh, secretary. Right. Support? Several people. <laughs> uh, any other candidates from the floor? All those in favor then of Jillian as secretary? Raise your hand. Any opposed? Thank you. Thanks. And the smooth transition of power continues in our democracy. Mr. Alleman. First of all, I'd certainly like to congratulate the three reelected officers. For it's a tightly held race, but no, uh, but, but I, I wanted to comment on one thing that uh, Jillian did say, uh, and that had to do with expiration of terms uh, on the board versus officer terms. I just happened to read the articles in Corporation today, or at least parts of it, regarding something else, and I noticed that there is there is some, a provision in there, if a, and I'm, you'll have to double check this, but this is my recollection. If a board term expires, <coughs> and it's for an officer, and it hasn't uh, the a new uh, somebody new hasn't been appointed to the board by the uh, city council or whatever the appointing body is, that there's provisions for that officer to remain on the board uh, and continue uh, until a replacement is uh, named and confirmed. I, I believe that's what it says. Is that our, is that our bylaws or in the articles? No, it's in the articles. Okay. Uh, I believe that actually applies to all members, not just mm -hmm. officers. Okay. So if yeah, city council is slow, then you're, <laughs> you're in it until uh, they say no. Okay, well thank you. That's, that's, uh, that's helpful to know. Um, okay, then we'll move on to, unless there's any further comment on it. We'll move on to item 3A, uh, policy monitoring and development. And we'll start with 3A, the board's annual plan of work item and ends policies. Uh, and number one, 3A1 is the approval and review of the uh, policy monitoring schedule, which was in your packet. Uh, I apologize for the, uh, the if, if you're like me and your eyes are not what they used to be, it was a little difficult to read. I, I fully get that. Um, but the, uh, uh, it's this nice color-coded sheet right here, which is our monitoring schedule, and it shows in some detail um, a schedule of monitoring all of our policies throughout the policy manual, and, and it's some of those are divided up between the, the CEO, some of those are divided up among the board to report out on, uh, governance service committees, uh, finance, et cetera, uh, and, and it's uh, got a timeline of other things too. Uh, so I don't know if there's any discussion about this, but all of our policies are covered here. Anybody comment or have any comment on it? Matt? Thank you, Mr. Chair. If I might, just a quick clarification. Um, the item before the board for your decision is actually this page, which is simply a uh, Good point. Uh, inventory listing the dates for the monitoring reports to occur. The beautifully colored and highly detailed uh, larger sheet is really just contextual background information. It has no uh, policy weight behind it. It's just a tool. So. Um, uh, just so you know what you're voting on, it is this one-page table, which if you see fit to accept it, we would update your policy manual to include these dates on this one page. Nothing else would change. This is a helpful tool, though, to see um, every policy at every meeting that we would be covering, so there's no um, kind of surprises or anything. But, um, but yeah, this is the actual document, so my apologies. Any comment, discussion on... There you go. <laughs> Any further discussion on this? I do. In, um, in the interest of being a giant pain, um, I noticed that there are a couple of pieces that we are intending to monitor in July and we don't typically have a board meeting in July. Um. <laughs> 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 
I, I, was, I, I enjoy not having a board meeting in July, <laughs> for the record. No, it's a good point. Uh, this doesn't take into effect when we may not, you know, for summer break, we don't do that. Um, I guess that's an open item for discussion. Do we want to amend this to reflect that? Uh, it just kind of, we could divide up those policies, some to go in June and some to go in August. Do we want to do that to, to reflect that so we budget in a break? I see some heads nodding. And mm -hmm. Matt? If I might, just by way of process, uh, uh, if there was a schedule for a monitoring report or any other item to a business to occur in uh, July and the board decided it did not want to have a meeting in July, that item would simply get bumped automatically to the next available uh, board meeting. Uh, there are no monitoring reports uh, presently scheduled for August or September to give space for the board's budgetary discussions every year. So uh, one option is certainly as the chairman has outlined, another is to uh, leave it as it is and see what happens in July and if if we still decide not to have a July meeting it would simply be deferred to the next available time oh, sorry um, well so it looks like it's correct me if I'm wrong but basically it's just the board committee principals and the board committee structure that needs to be assessed by the board. Um, if I mean, it's not like we ad hoc cancel a July me meeting that's part of our, our calendar, our standing calendar. So I would say we adjust this uh, schedule. Mm -hmm. I would be fine moving both to August. It seems like the only reporting that we have, the only monitoring we have is um, emergency succession, which hopefully shouldn't be a lot of work to I mean, it also Can has in here, uh, I just point out that the committees, which we usually also cancel in July, would be doing their first draft budget review at that mm -hmm. time. So we would compress that budget review process into August. Mm -hmm. Okay. So unless we want to, um, well, I guess we'd have to have some discussion about whether we want to back that up so we, we have that before the July break or we want to compress that into August and, and but maybe some discussion around that, how do people feel about moving it back into August, or do you feel comfortable, or back into June, or moving it forward into August? Well, so that, those are the commit, that's the committee work that month. I'd rather press the staff to get it to us in June, that's my personal thing, but, Sue? Yeah, Eli? I was going to suggest that perhaps we check with staff to see if June is sufficient time to have these issues ripen enough for yeah, us to take that. them up early. I was getting there. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I agree. I, I, I just want to get the board's preference first to see, but um, Roger? June. Julian? Uh, yeah, I guess my suggestion is to, especially considering the uh, I know that, that a lot of thought went into planning this out and making sure that that for the items that sort of waterfall into one another that they're in the right order. Um, and so I, um, my inclination is not to, to change this on the fly, but maybe to potentially bounce it back to staff unless you are eager to pass it tonight. Well, it is sort of. And going I know on it's a sort of a small year. procedural issue, and I and well, I would no, no, be fine I with adjusting it on the fly, and maybe I, I would also be fine with passing it now, adjusting it as needed for next year, and then repassing an amendment um, when we when we get a better feel for how it goes. You can do that, Prashant. Well, as it stands now, the default will be that it gets bumped to August, right? Yeah. Right. So why don't we? I mean, if one is better than the other. We can still change on the fly. We need to. Sure. Um, well, the, the only the, I would only caution though that if we default to bumping to August and people we get to June and people say, no, nah, I'd rather see the budget right now. I mean, that puts the staff in a tight spot to get it to us that that quickly. That's why we're just saying. Well, well, I guess I mean, what staff effort is needed for that those two particular items? 
board committee principles and board committee structure is no no I'm looking if you go further down here well you're on this but I'm oh. if you look at the, the color coded spreadsheet yeah both finance and the service committee will be doing a draft budget review that month in July so so we would be okay. we would be forcing that's that's the item I'm concerned about. Either we have to bump that back to June and, and just get them to do it quicker or we bump it to August and which gives us less time to review it. Thank you. So <clears throat> the budget uh, calendar is still a little illustrative. I see no challenges with uh, uh, us assuming the board would like to continue to preserve the possibility of no meeting in July if that's still a strong uh, a desire there uh, we can simply uh, update our ex our understanding of that budget timeline and bring a draft to you in June I see no concerns with that and if that uh, if the board would feel more comfortable preceding by just uh, amending this schedule in your motion uh, to move uh, monitoring for policies 3 6 and 3 7 into August uh, I see no I see no reason that can't happen right now if you'd be with that is that's what the board would like I see no reason why it couldn't sounds good to me okay so we will uh, for item 3a1 then the the appendix a policy monitoring information report schedules 3 6 and 3 7 would then get moved to August so as amended just strike that and put August there. Any other further, any further comment or discussion about that amendment? Use your mic. Do we need to look at the? Uh, <coughs> um, the other assessments that are going to be done in uh, June, excuse me, July, are those the only ones? Well, yeah, it's those. Those are the only board policies we're yeah. monitoring that we'd be okay. either asked to decide on or that Matt would report on. Yeah. But again, if you go at the, if you use the spreadsheet yeah. here and you go down to what the committees will be doing, mm -hmm. the, the draft budget review is yeah. also scheduled for that month. So we also have emergency succession due. In July? The 2.9. Yeah. Yes, yes, we do. So, yeah, we would be folding that and, and doing that the same month. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm fine yeah. with that. Any other discussion on the monitoring schedule or issues? Okay. Can I have somebody move the monitoring schedule into the record? Jillian, support, Sue. All those in favor of the monitoring schedule as amended, raise your hand. Any opposed? Okay. That passes. Thank you. Uh, the next item is annual plan of work and the did you print out the copies for the briefing schedules okay. do I have them oh were they oh were they oh, okay I didn't get one so yeah just to hold it up I, I uh, circulated I circulate electronically, and um, does anybody else need a copy? Everybody else have a copy? Did you get two copies? Okay. Uh, there's an annual plan of work uh, issue brief. Um, this was not meant to be decided tonight, but I thought we would start the discussion this evening and then maybe decide it uh, at a future meeting and then maybe possibly at a future board retreat we would also talk about this. But I thought it was important to um, talk about the goals the board wants to accomplish I mean aside from the operational things but 
in terms of strategically or the big goals that we, we look forward to. This is a, an illustrative, not a conclusive or determinative list, but just some things that we've talked about in the past that we may want to focus on. And I put together a small issue brief talking about you know, where this comes up in our policy, putting it on our agenda so we don't lose sight of it and that we make this a regularly scheduled item. Uh, and then just listing out some of the sections that we've talked about in the past, and I'm certainly open to discussing others, having the board deliberate about how we should structure this work, prioritize it, what we think we can realistically handle from a workload perspective, a time perspective, a resources perspective, et cetera. Um, but I thought I would put it on there. So there are some you know, issues on there that we probably could handle through committees or maybe a certain task force here or there. There might be some issues that we think we need to discuss in depth at, for instance, a board retreat or something like that. Some of these issues are weighty and meaty enough that they probably need some in-depth education stuff. Uh, we, we, there's probably no limit of data, for instance, on ridership versus coverage stuff that Prashant has brought to us that we could keep going deeper and deeper into. Uh, the investment policy, et cetera, uh, board, you know, board development, uh, ends development. I, you know, one issue I have is uh, what I would like to develop at some point is a process about policy, uh, policy development. So in other words, you know, so nobody's just kind of says, hey, I've got a great idea for a policy. What do I do with it? We have kind of a pipeline involved that, that somebody can actually put it into the system. We can have a review committee or a research committee to look into it, et cetera, and then it kind of goes down a pipeline. I'm no Six Sigma expert, but there's some you know, process-oriented stuff that, that they use there um, that, that could be beneficial in something like that. So, um, but I thought I would bring this to our attention uh, this evening, see if anybody had a comment or review. Uh, we could discuss it. And if you just have any general thoughts about what you might want to focus on, I'd be happy to discuss that as well. Take some, I'll, I'll take careful notes. But if not, I just ask you to consider this, and then when we uh, bring it back up, and we plan to bring it back up next month, um, we can have a fuller discussion about it. So any comments about the annual plan of work at this time? Eli? So there, I um, appreciate the opportunity to have received this uh, ahead of the meeting, and I did give it uh, some thought. And these are just um, issues for uh, consideration for inclusion. And that, um, the first one is we spent a fair amount of time developing a sustainability uh, policy. And um, that's a, a matter that's of keen interest to the um, city of Ann Arbor, and I believe it's of keen interest to us as well. So I'd like that added in the appropriate uh, place. And then um, the second one, and I think the way I'd like to frame it is uh, alignment with our local government um, policies and plans. I think that there are any of a number of issues and matters that come up and the issue uh, related to how well are we aligned with the interest of the subordinate, and I saw it's subordinate because we're regional, each one of them may be an individual municipality uh, but clearly there's a opportunity for um, alignment and resonance, and I'd like uh, for us to discuss uh, how important our own business interests are or might be relative to uh, aligning uh, our interests with our local partners. I know uh, Are you talking about from a resource point of view or some operationally or just any particular on area? A policy level could include all of the above. Okay. That's why I, I just wanted to put them into the hopper and see whether they um, have traction or not. So sustainability and alignment. Thank you. Any others? Mike? Uh, going to the end of this document, uh, net steps. I was wondering if there's yet been any thought or, uh, that could be more specific regarding timing on those steps. Yeah, no, I don't. Uh, I left it fairly vague on purpose because I think it'll be specific to the issue. So, um, for instance, the 
I, what I would like to do is, um, and we'll talk about this um, uh, in a little bit, probably towards the end of the meeting, but um, uh, you know, the Governance Committee, we talked a little bit about the upcoming board retreat and planning one. I'd like to flesh out some of these annual plan of work items, and then by the time we get to a retreat, hopefully sometime in the next few months, we are in a position where we can uh, at least chase down, here are the items we need, here are the things we want to focus on, here's the education and the data that we need to do it, here's what we want to accomplish, here are the tasks we want to assign, et cetera, uh, and then go through these next steps in terms of formalizing you know, the plan of work. So at some point, whenever we feel comfortable with it, I don't have a timeline if it's one month, two months, three months, I don't know, or at, or at a retreat sometime, we actually get a plan of work together um, I'm not sure if it needs a formal adoption or not, but it would be probably helpful if we had it. Then talk about how we're going to develop that. What are the outcomes that we want to see uh, and, and what are the measurements we're going to use to see if we were successful? Uh, assign the tasks and who's going to take charge of what. Um, is it a committee job? Is it a task force job? Is it one individual that's going to do it? Is it you know, staff that's going to put in the work, et cetera? and just make those kind of decisions, process decisions around it, then, then go out and execute it and come up with a timeline for that. And then, um, you know, again, define our success. How does that look? And then uh, hopefully come up with a timeline so that's done. So if, if we take one thing, you know, it's, we could just take something like updating the bylaws, right? If um, somebody wanted to review that, we could have a task force or one or two people that could look into that, um, just kind of bring some suggestions to the board in 60 days, let's say debate those, wordsmith those, and then, you know, maybe a couple of months after that, if we feel changes are necessary, we would move to adopt those. Uh, so it would be either something simple like that, which may take just a couple of months, or there's, you know, maybe something weightier or meatier like ridership versus coverage, which may take a lot more data gathering and a lot more um, planning and, and just conceptualizing and, f and philosophical discussion about what we want there. So that, that might be... Um, it's hard to it's hard to know until we actually define the outcomes with if we can formalize that. So I think it's a task by task process. But that's kind of the general outline of any particular thing we would do, at least in my mind. Uh, yes, thank you. There is an awful lot here, as I'm sure you appreciate probably more than anybody else, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, obviously prioritizing. All of these different things <laughs> is yeah. very important. And I, and I certainly didn't put them all on there to say we have to do all of those. Uh, I don't think that's, you know, that's going to be possible, at least not within the first, you know, fiscal year, obviously. I mean, these might be some aspirational things. Um, but, yeah, what, what do we agree are the most important things? And then kind of the reality check of what can we actually accomplish? What's feasible? Where do we want to put our time and effort? And what's going to get us the most value? to the, both our strategic development and our leadership um, duties as, as a board to, to mo have the most impact on the organization. We'll just have to have that. That's a more fluid and conceptual discussion philosophically. So that's, um, yeah, prioritizing and, and coming up with that is going to be probably the, the, as much conversation as anything else. Any other items, discussion, Jillian? So yeah, I, I appreciate um, even just these items. There, there is a lot here, uh, and um, so, so in the interest of prioritization, um, uh, I would love to. I, I think some of these board education items are probably the things that I get the most excited about because uh, we've been talking about doing more board education, and um, and it would be great to have some of those happen before a retreat. Uh, specifically, uh, I think ridership versus coverage, that having that discussion and potentially some of the TOD and land development um, questions, to have that as we go into a retreat, um, because those are going to inform our strategic goals that we need to adopt before the next five year, um, you know, looking at the next five years and looking at the next millage. Obviously, it's not it's a continuation, so it's not going to be as drastic a step as, as, our, as our 
millage was in 2014. Um, but I think that, that especially as we are going into um, another sort of cycle and our five-year plan is closing out, um, having some of those strategic discussions about um, you know what our options are and what directions we want to move in would be helpful but we but I, I know I would really like to have the board education first um, and then obviously a uh, new munis municipality policy is probably the other um, very high priority and probably something that's that's quite urgent uh, and it seems that if we can talk about resource allocation um, and I would specifically be really interested in learning more about um, uh, maybe a 30,000 foot overview of formula funding and how what factors go into the formulas that fund us uh, and how the municipalities that are members and the number of riders and the number of miles that we cover and the number of service hours, how those things affect our funding. Uh, so those would all be um, educational priorities for me. Um, and then just in the interest of piling on, uh, and maybe this is something we could do in the, the next year, um, but a rider amenities or a last mile policy would be something else that um, if it, if it can't happen this year, I understand we have a lot of other very pressing priorities, but that's something that I, I just want to throw on there as a, a, a future item of discussion. Thank you. Noted. Any others? Sue? Um, I'd love to um, explore somewhere um, uh, an area that would speak to innovation and perhaps um, along with that might be um, some language that would cover technology and thinking about transformative opportunities for us to r remain on the cutting edge um, of of wherever we need to be to sort of optimize um, how we're serving um, the community. And um, it, 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 it may include what is smart, a, a smart system, you know, whether it's signal prioritization, whatever those tools are, but somehow a category that might capture that. And, and maybe it's embedded here. and. Maybe it follows, maybe it's embedded under following city policies and programs, but I guess I'd love to have some language that would speak to some of that, at least captured. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Prashant? Um, yeah, I wanted to um, kind of piggyback off of Jillian's comments a little bit because uh, I don't know if these, if the, the potential items for discussion versus the board education items, if there were, if they were meant necessarily as a, um, as a prioritized list. But, uh, okay, that's good. I, uh, what's listed here under annual annual plan plan of work is actually very important. But as I see it here, um, it's. There, it's, it's a lot more sort of governance oriented and philosophical and I think it's I think it's very important for us to actually get educated as a matter of an annual work item I guess on an important transportation related um, item does that make sense um, like sort of like kind of understanding kind of in some aspects what are the um, the day-to-day -day issues that are being faced by the agency and also um, what's emerging, as Sue kind of mentioned. Yeah, I think there's probably a couple of parts to that. Yeah. One is, is probably innovation, right? Technology, what's new, what's exciting out there. Two is it's probably, um, you know, we, we do get a lot of monitoring reports, but to your point, um, what are the day-to-day -day issues the staff faces in executing its duties? We don't, you know, we have to make sure we probably don't lose sight of that. And three, I think there's a, probably an ownership linkage um, component to that, which is if we really want to know what's day-to-day -day on the ground and policy governance is really predicated on getting that feedback loop with our owners and, and stakeholders to say, um, you know, this is what we want to see, and maybe we'll hear from them, hey, we want, we want to see electric buses or we want to see, um, you know, more routes to this place or we want to see less routes here or we want to see more Sunday, whatever. Um, 
but that feedback loop with our owners, I think there's a component of that on the day-to-day -day as well. But I if yeah. you have something else in mind. Well, I, I, I guess maybe, I mean, it's generally that uh, having board education as part of the annual plan of work in some way on any one of these items and possibly others, um, it'd be good to see that. I don't necessarily see that um, in the annual plan of work. I know this is just a discussion, but um, I think it's important for us to understand the, the transit environment so that we can make smart decisions in, in that domain as well. Thank you. Any others? Roger? No, I'm, I'm pleased to see the on number three, the strategic thinking part. Um, you know, we spent an, an enormous amount of time putting policy governance into place and, and understanding it, and I'm starting to grasp of how much more work there really is to do to transform the entire organization into that model, um, and it's a huge job. But I don't think we can lose sight of what the board is really here for, which is to provide the vision for what this organization and to, to a larger degree the community, communities were, are a part of the authority, are going to look like in 5 and 10 and 20 years out. And I don't want to lose sight of the big plan by getting so, so tied up in how do we make this whole policy governance work that we forget what's really, we're really here for, which is to be ready for the future. So, so I'm just, I'm glad we've got strategic thinking on there and, and Matt is going to be giving us something on that in the future. Thank you. No, it's an important point about um, the prioritization. You know, that's that's got to be our our job. I mean, we, updating the bylaws is nice. I mean, it, but that's something that probably takes a back seat to the strategic vision that we're here for. Any others? Okay. So uh, the plan, I guess, you will put that on the next board meeting, so we can probably refine this and continue to hone it and. Um, um, talk about it we don't I'm not necessarily thinking we need to adopt something by the next board meeting but we'll have further discussion about it and um, I'll take some of these notes that I put together and maybe revise the list and then redistribute it and we can have further discussion about it so Sue so. sure yep anything else on 3a2 uh, so we'll go to 3B1, Policy Monitoring and Committee Reports, and we'll start with Finance Committee. I'll turn it over to Mr. Alamein. So it was nice to have the second uh, meeting of the con newly constituted Finance Committee, and I, th I, think it, I think we had a good meeting. We did talk more about the budget and got a, an abbreviated presentation from John from what we had gotten before. In fact, it, it's very similar to what's in the board package tonight. Uh, we had some discussion of that, uh, but because we have been looking at the budget for quite a while, uh, and we'll be talking about it some more tonight, uh, we didn't spend a whole lot of time on that. We spent most of our time on uh, really looking at a what might what we might be expecting and wanting for the quarterly financial reports we've been seeing monthly financial reports in the past they've been very detailed um, and we've had a little bit of discussion in the past about how those might be improved um, at th the meeting that we had this month of our committee uh, we had a lot more discussion about that and about what different members of the committee would like to see as far as quarterly financial reporting that I think I think was uh, some very good comments and in addition uh, John did have an example first draft of what a quarterly report financial report might look like much more abbreviated much more graphical um, than what we have been seeing, and I think we, I think the committee all agreed it was. It, we were very pleased to see the, really what John correctly identified as a preliminary first draft of what something might 
look like. Um, and I, and I, I, you know, we gave him comments. We got some ideas from him, and I think it was very productive. Uh, we look forward to the next quarterly report that uh, uh, I hope might be pretty close to what we would be going on with. Uh, on the other hand, I'm, I'm sure just like so many other things regarding adopting our new policy governance is that it, it will be a, an ongoing process. We, we won't be uh, setting anything in stone at any time, but we don't, on the other hand, we certainly don't want to keep changing what the staff and, and particularly John has to do <laughs> in order to give the committee and then of course the board uh, the quarterly financial report. And uh, that was really, as I said, the major uh, discussion we had at the meeting. Thank you. Uh, any comments or questions for Mike about the Finance Committee? Any additions? We move on then to item 3B2, which is a report out from the Service Committee. Mr. Hewitt. Thank you. Uh, I think we had a, a pretty productive uh, meeting. Um, Jillian uh, brought up some information about the uh, potential Water Street project in Ypsilanti and um, potential need for transit there. Um, and I believe Mr. Yang has uh, um, already discussed, had some preliminary discussions about that, um, which is very uh, informative. Um, also, there was some interest in a uh, proposed stop, a train stop in Depot Town. We haven't really been approached on that by the city yet, so I guess we'll just you know, wait and see on what ha goes on with that. Um, and John and Kyra and uh, Forrest, I think we all, all went to Grand Rapids um, for a governance training session. From what fe little feedback I've gotten, it sounds like it was quite productive. Um, we didn't really spend too much time talking about the budget because I think we've been through that pretty thoroughly now. Um, Matt then uh, presented sort of the structure of what the service development of service and satisfaction report is going to be, which um, is pretty extensive. There, there's really going to be um, sort of a structural change in how the organization um, develops its metrics, um, a lot of um, systematic approach to how things are, are done and are monitored. Um, it was a pretty impressive list, although it's, it's in a very preliminary in its state right now. Um, and this will be generating a huge amount of data, much of which at our level we probably don't need, but but we will, you know, uh, I think Matt and his staff are working on getting the data that is most useful for us up to our level. And so the, you start with a lot of data and then sort of build up to uh, um, the things that are going to hopefully be most useful for us. So this is uh, just the start of what's going to be a pretty extensive work in progress, but um, I am particularly encouraged about the, the st overall structure that's being put in place. I think that's uh, a very positive um, development. Uh, and that was the most of what we discussed. Um, did talk briefly about the millage. Um, our first monitoring report is going to be, I believe, next month on external relations. Um, and I think that was pretty much highlights any questions okay. thank you any questions additions anything okay thank you uh, we'll move on then to item 3c 3c1 is a report out from the local advisory council that one on over cheryl Is this on? Okay, great. Um, <coughs> looking at your copy of our 
minutes in your packet, I um, need to preface this with you are receiving a draft report of our minutes um, because there are, there are a couple things that, that aren't accurate. Um, we had a member of the LAC that commented that the LAC hadn't received um, authority budget reports before, and we certainly have. Um, but that person hasn't been with us long enough to have appreciated that. So I will make sure that that is corrected in our final minutes. Other than that, we were pleased to meet Mr. Metzinger and see his um, participation in the first report under policy governance. And we had some concerns uh, reported by writers. And while we appreciate very much Mr. Bill DeGroote, we miss Brian a lot and are glad that he's doing well. So uh, we received a um, resignation from the second chair uh, due to health concerns and are receiving applications for new members of the LAC, which as soon as the LAC meets again and makes recommendations will be coming to you. So thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Cheryl? Okay. Thank you. We'll move on then to item 3C2, uh, a report out from Watts, the Washtenaw Area Transportation Study. I don't know if no, Mr. Krieg was not here this month. I don't know if anybody attending this place, if Matt, you did. Mr. Carpenter. Very briefly, as appears in my CEO's report, the policy committee did not achieve quorum, so no business was conducted. Thank you. Very good. Item 3C3 then, a report out on the Ann, uh, last latest meeting of the Ann Arbor Transportation Commission. Mr. Bururaja. Uh, the meeting date was changed and I was unable to attend the meeting. I don't know if Eli was there to give an update. Just quickly, there were a few agenda items uh, addressing um, some of the commission members had a particular interest in uh, some designs for Pauline Boulevard, a uh, city street that's undergoing design. Uh, there will be a public meeting also on October 12th. I'm not exactly sure, but for any uh, members of the public that are interested, in, there is a um, city website that would list where the Pauline Boulevard meeting will be held on October 12th. The question is uh, what type of non-motorized accommodations? Uh, so there's currently partial bike lanes and partial shared road um, segments and some of the commission members believe there are opportunities for eliminating on-street parking and increasing the viability of different forms of bicycle lanes and bicycle uh, or cycle tracks uh, on that street. So there was an engaging discussion and again, uh, the staff agreed with uh, the commission uh, to um, listen to what the public has to say and the, um, the final chapter's not written on that uh, project just yet. There was also a significant presentation by uh, city staff on the tree line. Uh, it used to be the Allen Creek Greenway, and the um, commission took a resolution in support uh, to recommend to council to su uh, support the development of or adoption of the master plan for the Ann Arbor Tree Line Urban Trail. If there are any questions on that, uh, I could try to answer, or I could refer you back to uh, staff that were involved directly with that project. Thank you. Questions on that? Okay. We'll move then to item four, which is uh, strategy and operational updates from the CEO for our proposed 2018 budget. Mr. Carpenter, I don't know if you want to tee it up or just turn it to Mr. Metzinger. I see Mr. Metzinger approaching the podium. I'll turn it over to him. Good evening. Thank you. 
Um, it, it's really been my pleasure to lead this organization through the budget process this year. Uh, as your new CFO, it certainly has been an opportunity to hit the ground running. Um, bef before you tonight is an issue brief and a resolution. And there is also attached a summary of the operating and the capital budget for proposed 2018. Passage of the resolution by the board is the means by which the rights budget would be adopted or authorized. And this must occur before the start of our new fiscal year, which is next week, October 1st. Um, we are asking you to approve the recommended budget as presented in the budget booklet. And this is the entire booklet that was presented to you last month. It's available on the Re RISE website for those in the public who are interested. The summary sheet that is attached to tonight's budget is uh, solely a summary of the financial elements of the budget. So what we're asking, asking you to adopt is the entire budget, which proposes $49,142,069 in operating and capital ex expenses for 2018. We're proposing a balanced budget for 2018 that preserves existing service for riders uh, with no fare increase and also with no increase in property tax rates. Uh, we've been able to reduce operating expense by nearly half a million dollars over the current year's budget. And we are setting aside funds for the reserve, uh, ensuring that we have funding for ongoing operations um, for the future. Uh, by looking at the budget within a multi-year context. Um, and then we're gonna be continuing to replace buses to provide new buses for riders. Um, I would like to thank the RISE staff who were highly involved in preparing the budget. Um, it's been a pleasure to be the, the person up front to present it to you, but this has clearly been a team effort. Mostly I would like to thank Phil Webb, our controller and manager of finance, also Bill DeGroot, Julia Roberts, and all the senior managers who are highly involved in putting this together for you tonight. Um, and so at this point in time, I look forward to the board's questions, and thank you for the opportunity. Any questions and comments for our CFO, or comments and questions on the budget in general? Mike? Uh, as I've said and other people have s said before, I, I, I think a, really a, an excellent job was done this year in developing this budget and presenting it to the committees and to the board. And um, it's, it's been remarkably smooth from my perspective anyway. And in particular, I, I would like to emphasize that I, I would guess we're not going to have a lot of discussion tonight. I could be wrong, but we've had, it's been really nice as far as I'm concerned that we've had, it's, I've had experiences before both with nonprofits and in the profit making world, getting a budget at the kind of the last minute and not really having time to review it and discuss it and so forth. It's been really a pleasure to have gotten involved in seeing numbers and having discussions uh, a number of months ago on this. And uh, to me, that's one of the best things that has happened during this budget cycle. Thank you. Any others? Prashant? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, thanks, John, for uh, the budget. And, and it's it was good to see everything in a clear way and, and including some of the challenges that were uh, potentially um, facing us. And um, I'm glad that, uh, that whatever challenges that, were, uh, that we are going to face are going to be addressed head on right now um, before they become even more of a problem. Um, that said, I am still concerned about the ne over the next several years about what the fiscal health is going to be of the agency. Um, but I think this is a very responsible step forward for this year, and I'm happy to support it. Uh, I do want to say, though, this is not necessarily to be construed as a support for renewal of the millage. I think we need to see a little bit more information and analysis about what's actually appropriate so that we can serve our community 
a, a, in a fiscally respo uh, responsible way. So, um, so those are my comments, and thanks a lot. Thank you. Others? Roger? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to echo Mike's uh, comments. This was uh, certainly the most thoroughly um, presented and studied budget <laughs> for a nonprofit organization that I've been involved with, and uh, I appreciate all the effort that you and your staff put into it because it, it clearly shows. Um, it, you know, the graph part is very, very understandable for almost anyone to look at. Um, the amount of time we got ahead of time so we could really dig into it and ask questions and get answers, I think the whole process went very well. And I, I again, like to compliment you and your staff. Thank you. Yeah. Eli? So I think overall the budget is um, is, is a good reflection of where uh, staff is as it looked at uh, some of the challenges it was confronted with. I think there's some opportunities as we move forward to, um, to do better. So we identified that there was uh, or is or may be because it was presented in the budget as a fiscal reality. Uh, but that there was a mismatch between our in-hand resources and our fleet management program. And if you look back over the decades, it was never a cash-in-hand fleet replacement. It was typically a process that included state and federal resources that were used to upgrade, replenish, refresh our, um, our fleet. I think there's an expectation that the higher forms of government are no longer in the position financially to help us, so I'm glad, and I congratulate staff for outlining a plan that says we will take care of our own business with our own resources, but I want to encourage staff to continue to be entrepreneurial and to advocate, because if you don't, you don't get what you don't ask for, and there are still are billions of dollars at the state level and tens of billions of dollars at the federal level that are invested in transit and transportation services and uh, acknowledging that we uncovered that we had a fleet replacement and management issue I think was wonderful. The fact that we were able to address it uh, with in-house resources uh, equally compelling, but I really would like for us to look back at how business has been done here because I think that's an opportunity to free up resources that are now bound up in something like a bus into something much more exciting like innovation, like technology. So that's uh, comment one. Comment two, at our last meeting, I raised an issue in terms of transit access. And unlike my board colleagues, um, I am not pleased at all with the fact that there not only has been no change in the access to service information in the budget, but there's not been any outreach uh, to us as a board. No further information I had made requests about. So we have $100,000 for customer access. What is that for? What are our policies? What are our priorities? What's the status of our existing condition? Basic system planning. So I welcome Forrest, and I hope that as we move forward, we can put a, um, a significant amount of interest and attention. The budget is a financial plan. Uh, I mentioned that last month I wasn't content with the level that was identified, and I think that this is an opportunity for us, again, moving forward. Uh, we'll adopt the budget with a platform, but that this is an area that clearly needs uh, more attention or more information needs to be provided to, uh, to us as a board. The other thing that I keep hearing about, and it grates me every time I hear it, is that the next millage is nothing more than a maintenance millage. And let me tell you folks, you probably heard this before, but standing still is falling behind. Standing still is falling behind. The idea that we're going to sit back and go back to our voters and indicate that, hey, last five years we've got some new resources, we've expanded service, we're tired. We're gonna do what we've done setting this up and we're gonna do it moving forward. 
three items that were talked about when we talked about our work program. Uh, innovation, technology, sustainability, alignment. These are the kinds of issues that I hope motivate our organization beyond the, this is just a maintenance, because the Ann Arbor area is a dynamic and growing economic educational dynamo. And for us to set our expectations on sustaining ourselves based on experience uh, that we had five years and now we're kind of, it's not going to work. We're going to be losing mode share. We're going to be losing our standing in not only our community, but within the industry. And I want to encourage ourselves as a board, as Roger saying, strategic planning, and our staff to continue to reach to be the leaders that the ride has been over the past decades looking forward. And I hope that I don't have to hear that we're just going for um, maintenance millage and we're going to keep things as they are because five years is an awful long time uh, for us to embrace status quo. Um, I will be supporting the budget because I do acknowledge and recognize the amount of work that was done in order to put it together, but I think it is a point of departure. It's a financial plan for the coming year. And let's see how we as a board going through our processes continue to work better uh, with our own interest and in working with our staff uh, colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Jillian? Uh, thank you, and I appreciate Eli's comments. They're uh, difficult to follow, but excellent. Um, I do very much appreciate and I want to commend staff on this budget. I think it is the best presented budget that I've seen um, since I've been here. Uh, I particularly appreciated uh, the, the, this is the first time that we've actually been able to see capital and operating budgets in the same place. It's the first time we've been able to see longer term projections. Um, these are huge, huge uh, in terms of our ability to make decisions as a board. Um, and I, I specifically appreciate um, Sue for, for pushing to help that happen and John um, in coming on and being willing to take that on in your first year. Uh, I really just I so much appreciate the way that this has been presented. Um, the background information I, I feel is really succinct. It was the right information um, and, and an appropriate amount. Um, I appreciate that. I realize that the um, that we, we hit in some ways a non-ideal situation uh, in terms of discovering that our financial situation was not as sunny as we originally thought. Uh, and I really appreciate, especially with all the conversations we've been having about policy governance um, and the board laying out our priorities and then staff uh, moving toward those priorities. And more than anything, I think that our board has said the number one priority is, is the rider. And the fact that staff did reconfigure the budget in a way and that this really reflects that. We didn't cut service, we didn't raise fares, we didn't do anything that most riders would notice. And we're able to find operational efficiencies to address that, um, I think is really impressive. Um, one thing I brought up in our service committee meeting um, had to do with the capital budget. And I think that there are a couple things um, I, I really agree with Eli and want to explore that rider amenities and accessibility piece uh, that is probably the most important piece of the capital budget in terms of what our, what our riders see every day. Um, and I think that there's a, a difference in our capital budget between items that should not go above what is listed and items where more, more is better. And rider amenities is the example of an area where if there's more money that we can put into rider amenities, great, let's have more rider amenities. Uh, then there are areas like IT and facilities rehabilitation, which really are the least sexy things that we do. They're the furthest away from our customers and the furthest away from our riders. So I don't want to see numbers put in there and then, and then staff say, oh, well, we've got $300,000. Let's find a way to spend $300,000. Uh, no, let's, um, you know, and, and I think Matt did reassure me that this is a, a placeholder and it is about staff creating a plan that is about making sure that our facilities are maintained in an appropriate way um, at, at the most, in the most efficient way possible. And so with some of those things that are far away from our riders, let's figure out how to do that, you know, in, a, in the best way. Um, 
And finally, to Eli's point, uh, since I was the one who said uh, maintenance millage, it, that's, that is not what I meant, and I appreciate the correction. Um, the millage that we had in 2014 was the, fair, the ride's first uh, millage increase in decades. But during those decades, when the rate stayed the same, the ride moved forward and forward and forward. And they did that through grants, um, through partnerships, through uh, operational efficiencies, through embracing new technology, uh, through a lot of different ways. So there are, as we have proven as an agency, there are a lot of ways to keep moving forward with the same resources. And so I hope that we will be able to continue what we took from this budget um, into the future and look forward to seeing that. Thank you. Any other comments, questions on the budget? Sue? A lot of great comments, and I won't, um, won't repeat them. So I would just like to add with the thanks um, that what I appreciate most of all is the transparency that I think this budget has helped improve um, for our organization um, to the public. I think the way the material's been presented and having an integration of operating and capital so we could really see the whole thing um, has been such a challenge, but it is going to be very helpful. We should think of this as a baseline, really. This should be the baseline of a new methodology and a new understanding um, of our fiduciary responsibilities. And now that we have a tool uh, hopefully we can build upon that to remain incredibly transparent to um, to our writers. So thanks again for the great effort. Very well done. We've got some work to do. Any other comments, questions? Uh, no, my thanks, too, for a uh, uh, very well done budget, and, and I won't repeat the, uh, the other compliments you, you've gotten, but uh, they, they speak for me as well. Um, yeah, I agree fully that the budget is a tool um, that we need to use to, to accomplish the ends that we, we handed over to the staff. Um, I don't want to lose sight of the fact that the, you know, as we go forward and think about what's being you know, entrepreneurial and, and how do we meet the needs of the community with the resources we have, um, the, you know, the, really the method that we, because we can't adjust the budget mid-year and we can't, we can't tweak it month by month. Um, the real work in terms of what, how we're going to get what we want out of our budget as a board and how we're going to meet the needs of the community really needs to be reflected in the goals that we give them via the ends that we give them. So going forward, I think this will be, uh, be a, even a more robust process in that when we retool or we think about the ends that we want them to achieve, we really need to do a deep dive and some deep thinking in terms of, all right, how is this going to be interpreted by the staff? What resources will they assign to that? So, you know, we'll just take one example, rider amenities. If we want rider amenities to be bolstered, doubled, and we want things that we can say, well, cut over here and put that money over here, uh, that's got to be reflected. They're not going to know that instinctively. They're going to look at the ends, and Matt's going to look at the ends and say, all right, whatever else was said by any individual board members, I'm going to look at what was adopted by the full board as one voice, and this is what they said. And he's going to put an interpretation of that, and he's going to budget around that, and he's going to instruct John's organization to budget around that. So if we want to if we want to see a certain direction in terms of using the budget as a tool to accomplish certain ends or certain goals, we're going to have to make that clear as, as one voice, as a board, to hand that off to, to the staff. So um, I, I appreciate all the comments about, um, you know, directed at John and, and Matt to say, hey, let's get away from stuff that's non-essential and put it into here or let's, let's talk about these different aspects of the budget. But really, the, the people we should be talking to is ourselves about that and, and reconstituting, hey, this is how I think this should work, and therefore I want to adjust the goals that we give the staff accordingly 
and then we have to adopt that. And if, and if that happens, then Matt will have solid footing. But if it's just one individual request here, one individual request there, um, Matt has the right to say, I don't want to confuse the issue. I'm going to go by what was adopted by the board, and, and that's what he should do. Uh, so I encourage us, if we, have, if we have policy language or other methods we, we can use as a board to give that direction to the staff, then that's what we should do. Just, and that's just kind of a process, process methodology comment from me because um, I don't want to lose all of the good comments that have been said here in terms of how we should use the budget as a tool. Um, but it's not going to really translate into action unless we as a board make that happen collectively and then hand that off to the staff by some kind of formal adoption process. I don't, I don't want to pile on in this one writer amenities thing, but that was one of the questions that I had in the Finance Committee about uh, sort of a more dis uh, a better description of what that me meant. And, um, and I was kind of interested in um, how if through expansion of services that line item didn't expand uh, in the same proportion, does that mean we're falling behind? Does that mean, you know, certain, certain stops just don't get the amenities that others do? Um, and we're going to have more. We have more stops now, so I don't want to hold up this particular discussion. But in in terms of process, how can we get an answer to a certain question that, let's say, multiple board members might have? Because the the single request doesn't seem to actually prompt Matt or the staff to give us an answer. And maybe we 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 back off because we either forget about it or we just think it's being answered. Maybe there's a way. Do we need to have like a board request for certain types of information? No, I think if if there was a request that was overlooked, then we should we're right to raise it again and say, hey, I, I had this question and it didn't get answered. Particularly if it's multiple multiple board members, then then the staff should address that. Um, I appreciate you know. Well, let's keep going with the rider amenities topic. If if you know, as Eli has pointed out, what is that for? What are, what are we actually putting that hundred thousand dollars towards in terms of rider amenities? That's perfectly legitimate to ask for and get because that may influence the direction of how we we shape our our goals and how our, our ends look. And we say, well, we might want to put more emphasis on that, and that may be reflected in 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 the goals that we hand off and we our revision of our ends, and then for, therefore we say, you know, this is how we would like this to look. We hand it off to them. They we adopt it. We hand it off to them, and and then Matt being a part of the discussion can say, well, I heard what the board said. I saw what they put in writing. You know, I've got to, I've got to adjust for that. So uh, that's a long-winded way of saying, you know, if that's a request that we want to dive into that could possibly shape our goals and our ends, then they should give us that information. So if there's, I don't think there's, we've never developed a particular process for saying, you know, listing out all of the board answer, you know, the board requests, and, and maybe we should have a more formal process for that. But, um, but. If it's been asked several times by several board members, then then the staff needs to respond to that. So I, I you know, I've certainly took in, I've taken a note or two here about the fact that that was a repeat request that needs to be answered, um, and uh, I think that should be answered going into our next, you know, fully developed board retreat policy slash policy discussion where we we may want to adjust our ends accordingly. But that's a piece of data that we need in order to do that. So I guess that's a message to Matt and John to talk about the ridership amenities for uh, future board meetings and, and future policy discussions. Yeah, uh, just so. real quick. I mean, that's an example of an issue. I mean, no, I, but I it's just, a real world yeah. example. I mean, we've talked about yeah. it and should be and it needs to be addressed. I mean, I've, three board members have spoken on it now, and it you know, obviously it's on the mind of several board members, so it, it could have a real influence and impact on our policies going forward, so it needs to be addressed. So I think that's totally appropriate. That's what these that's what these meetings are for. I mean, that's the whole reason we went to this policy governance thing, so we could have these discussions. Matt? Uh, I appreciate that issue being raised, um, uh, and I look forward to working with John maybe next week to, to find out if a miscommunication occurred because I, I know we did hear that question and I believe John did respond and there is an email chain between him and several board members about that question but clearly it didn't uh, go far enough so clearly there is more that we could have done in that moment 
to have a clear uh, part of that uh, dialogue or, or um, conversation, whether it would be clarifying the question or whatever else it might be, uh, we're not content to, uh, uh, to, to rest until you have the information you need. So although uh, there was a response, uh, perhaps it didn't go far enough, and we're committed to working with you to make sure it does in the future. Thank you. Do you want to reiterate it here now or have the discussion openly, or do you want to just wait and respond? I mean, if you want to review the, the communications that were, and then supplement those, that's fine, too. I think that's uh, I'm not sure it has a material effect on the discussion this evening. It's simply a process note for John and I that um, something went awry, and, and uh, the information uh, didn't suit, didn't meet all of the board's interests in that question. I want to backtrack with John and just what happened because there was a discussion I just uh, uh, obviously it wasn't far enough so uh, that's something uh, with the board's uh, latitude we'll work on that and make sure it happens uh, appropriately in the future okay yeah. Sue well now some of us may have our interests peaked so when you recirculate the information could it be shared with everybody thanks Any other comments, questions on the budget, budget process, anything? Okay, we have a resolution in our packet then to adopt this budget. Uh, all those in favor of the resolution, can I, sorry, can I have somebody move it into the record, which would be Sue, support from Mike. Any other comment, discussion? All those in favor of the budget, the resolution, raise your hand. Any opposed? That passes unanimously, thank you. Uh, then we'll move on to item 4B, the CEO report. Thank you, John, once again. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, normally I wouldn't uh, speak to the CEO's report as it is intended as certainly, certainly just a, a written update. There are two additions I'd like to make that have uh, sort of come up since this document was written. Uh, first, um, uh, I will be visiting uh, Pittsfield Township towards the end of October. Uh, they have requested us to stop by and just have a conversation with their Board of Trustees about future options uh, for them, uh, continuing as a POSA member or, or perhaps there are other options. I do not perceive uh, at this time that there is any decision or uh, even the, 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 the beginnings of a decision for them. I am been, I've been in conversation with their township supervisor, and I'm quite confident that this is a very preliminary exploratory conversation on their part about where they see themselves being. Uh, so myself and a couple staff members will be joining them for one of their evening uh, meetings and just providing them with some preliminary information. We do stop by our POSA members from time to time in their trustee and board meetings to provide them with contract updates. And I see this as maybe a slight step beyond that. And uh, this happens um, a couple of days after our October board meeting, I believe, and a day before our governance meeting in October. So I'll certainly be letting the governance committee know uh, the next morning uh, how it went uh, the evening before. Uh, so I just wanted to make you aware of that because it'll probably be in their public information packets uh, that they'll be uh, disseminating that we're coming to talk to them and I just didn't want you to be taken uh, unawares. Uh, another one is a much more emergent issue uh, I just want to bring to your attention so that you are aware in case you get a question. Uh, unfortunately in our uh, society sometimes uh, um, members of the public have uh, interactions with the police and there are misunderstandings and this can create uh, uh, socially I won't say volatile situations. Um, we also, as a public transit agency, have many pieces of property, and we frequently are the setting for uh, some interactions between law enforcement and the local population. Uh, such an incident occurred on Tuesday. Uh, a number of adolescents were at the Blake Transit Center. Um, something, incur something caused the police officer to respond, and there was an altercation, and the police officer subdued uh, a teenage male. Um, I'm not sure whether an arrest was made. I'm still gathering background myself. Um, um, 
and as far as I know, uh, uh, no, no injury was done. Um, and like I say, this was we were merely the setting. There was nothing about the Blake that contributed to the situation to my knowledge. Uh, however, um, the incident has appeared on social media and is being circulated around the community. Uh, I wanted to make you aware of it in case uh, you see it uh, in the coming days. Um, uh, the adolescent male uh, was an African American. The uh, officer involved was also African American. It has appeared on uh, a Facebook site, and the, the video, well, a video of the incident was made with a cell phone. Should mention that. That video has been posted to social media sites that I believe are aligned with the Black Lives Matter uh, movement. So it has taken on a social justice um, weight. I believe there is some uh, um, requests being directed towards the Ann Arbor Police Department. I had a brief conversation with the city manager this afternoon about this. Full confidence in the city and the police department and the community to work this out. Um, we are really nothing in this situation, nothing more than the setting as the Blake Transit Center. Um, nevertheless, it is being circulated. Our name is attached to it as the location of the incident in question. Um, and we will be working with the police and whomever else in the community we need to uh, as, as the situation uh, evolves. Um, thankfully, it doesn't appear that anyone was seriously hurt as far as I can tell. And I'm afraid I don't have a whole lot of more background information for you. Um, we're still pulling together our uh, perception of what occurred uh, as well. So I just wanted to make you aware of that um, in case you hear something about it in the community in the near future. Uh, that's all I have to add to my report, but I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions on Mr. Carpenter's report out? Rashawn? Thanks for that. I actually hadn't heard that, um, so thanks for the information. My question is not about that. Um, it's about uh, uh, we had I think temporarily appointed you to attend the Watts meeting last month. Do you think we might need to do that again? Do you know if Larry has indicated if he might not be able to? I know there was an important vote to, to, to happen, and um, could we provisionally appoint Matt or something in, in this in, in case because Larry's not here? I mean, I don't know. I have no problem with it. Uh, if I might, the, the item at question. Uh, that Larry and Mr. Creed was very concerned about last month had to do with a vote on a procedural matter about allowing money to be spent uh, along uh, state trunk lines. That issue is unresolved uh, simply because the policy committee right. didn't achieve quorum, so no action was taken. Um, so I believe Mr. Creed would still feel strongly that we should support it. Um, that was my intent uh, appearing at the meeting was to vote in favor of it. I don't know uh, Mr. Krieg's itinerary uh, or whether he will be here. If you certainly uh, are more than happy to do it, if, if you'd like, uh, perhaps in the event he is unable to, uh, might be one way to consider wording that. Because otherwise, I wouldn't want his, his thing. That's what I was thinking, if we need to do that, if there's support to do that. Then. Uh, just by a show of head shakes or head nods is any objection to Matt attending Watts if Mr. Krieg is unavailable to attend? Does anybody object? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. I don't. I mean, I, I asked in the negative, so I don't want to <laughs> confuse anybody. Okay. So then we, if uh, Mr. Krieg is unable to attend next month, then uh, Mr. Carpenter will in his in his place. Any other questions on the CEO report out? Okay. Uh, we'll move on then to item five, board development 5A, uh, governance policy monitoring. I left this, um, the, the, you'll notice the schedule in the packet um, was originally going to be a report out on, on 3.0 for this month, but it was revised, so we actually are reporting on it on next month. Um, so I kind of jumped the gun a month early on sending out that survey, but thank you for everybody who's sent that in, and, and most of you have already. Um, I think I, I will say this without kind of getting into the details of it. Um, 
this is a this is a learning moment for me personally in sending these out because I think there was a lack of as I look at it now and I can see it uh, pretty glaringly there was probably a lack of clarity among uh, along what we were trying to really ask for in this uh, and I think there was probably also some information that should have accompanied that uh, because I saw a the range of comments I saw from the people who responded were were diverse, which is great, but it, they were so diverse, they told me, you know, they, it was, it, it was not, I won't say not useful, but it was clear that it was, you know, everybody was kind of like, well, I guess they're leaving it up to me to interpret <laughs> what the heck this is talking about. And I probably should have done a better job focusing it and, and probably either lengthening it or, and or submitting more information that would have made the survey clearer uh, in terms of the interpretation of it, what we're really asking for, and in terms of whether or not we are compliant or not, that probably should be the last question on the list instead of the first question um, uh, up front. So I'll probably resend it out uh, based on what I saw and the, the just kind of the range of comments that I saw and, and everything else. So I'll, I'll look forward to that. I will work on that, taking into consideration all of the different kind of comments I got. Uh, recirculating that and then we'll we'll and I'll probably f more fully develop it and and do it better next time so uh, look forward to that next next week uh, other than that uh, I don't have any other governance policy monitoring reports anybody else with any governance policy issues that they wanted to raise or mention okay uh, item 5B then, Board Education. Uh, I know in the, this section, uh, Ms. Sims wanted to, she attended the policy boot camp and wanted to give a report out on that, so I'll turn it over to her. Yes, um, last week, Forrest and John and I went to Grand Rapids for um, policy governance training that I think everyone else on the board has already had uh, with Susan. So I found it very helpful as I get acquainted with this method. Um, there are a few things I there's I brought my binder if anybody wants to look through the materials but there are a few takeaways that Eric already addressed I thought the ends monitoring tool um, in general was helpful we went through that and then I realized we were already using it so that's good um, I thought another helpful takeaway that we might want to implement is assigning each board member a policy for each meeting to make sure that when we're having discussions about um, any monitoring reports or anything like that that board member would be it assigned with making sure that we're in compliance with our rules as we have those discussions. So I think that might be a helpful, practical way for us all to um, really get more familiar and adjust our processes a little bit. And just one other comment that I had as we were having the discussion earlier about um, just the example for the ridership amenities, something that came up a lot in our discussion. I should mention it was a small group. There's only six of us and three were from here. So it was much more personal uh, seminar, but something that was just since my mind is in policy governance mode, uh, that was kind of a red flag was when we're asking for staff to do anything, I think it is um, important to be very careful that if we are gonna implement if a certain amount of board members are asking for a particular amount of information that the same uh, piece of information that we're very clear about is it a majority of board members want more information about this so that we're not having one or two um, board members sending staff in different directions that maybe we didn't intend to so that's just a word of caution as I was thinking that through and that's it thank you that's a good reminder um, that so um, in the future we'll have more fuller discussion about that in terms of information requests Mike I'd like to ask you a question Kyra about that um, you know we started discussing policy governance um, a long time ago way before of course you joined the board as you are aware and we started out by really studying the main guru in this area John Carver, and we deliberately made some decisions that didn't exactly follow along with what his main principles were. Um, for example, I, I think what we adopted as our um, committee structure is very different than what he was 
recommending. I'm, I'm just wondering if there was anything that you learned at your seminar uh, that is different from what we are doing that you think might be significant that you should consider. That's a broad question. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I, I missed the discussion when you guys came up with our committee structure. So I think, uh, well, yeah, but, but based on the seminar, I think that is maybe something we need to continue to think through just to make sure that we're meeting our, our ends goals. Um, because I think probably one of the uh, downsides to the committees is getting too much into the day-to-day -day operations and not paying attention to that ownership linkage. And that's something that we spent a lot of time referring back to throughout the workshop. So I think, I think it's just going to be an adjustment. And maybe it would be helpful to do a task force or something like that where s board members are in charge of, aside from just assigning policies, to just presenting information on a periodic basis on how we can do better at policy governance or something like that. Or, and continuing to attend the trainings. There's another one in April. <laughs> yeah, committee structure was one that we had, a, of course, a lot of discussion about in terms of um, what they will do, what they won't do, what they're there for, what they're not there for. Uh, the budget was another one where we had a point of departure and where the Carver model said, nah, it's just a tool, don't, don't worry too much about it. And we said, nah, no, that's not satisfactory. And we just, we just kind of made a point of departure for that. So um, yeah, you weren't, you weren't here for those, but uh, don't be surprised if you said, hey, this doesn't align with what I heard at the seminar. And we said, yeah, yeah, we know that. I mean, <laughs> but, but you might get that once in a while. Um, but maybe, uh, John, Forrest, if you attended, if there's anything you guys want to add to uh, what, you, what you heard, what you learned, what uh, shocked you in terms of what we're doing here, and, and say, hey, wait a minute. I, I would be, I don't know if I, can you hear me there? I think we can. <coughs> yeah, so um, thank you for the opportunity. It, it was a really good training. It was my first experience with policy governance. Uh, the organizations that I've worked with in the past have had the traditional board model in some cases, uh, a working board, um, you know, um, so it, it was, um, in a way, it was kind of mind-blowing was the, the way I described it when I came back. I did recognize, I think, that there were some differences in our adoption of policy governance that were not following the Carver model as strictly as it's taught. Uh, the, the budget definitely caught my attention. Um, and I asked questions about that, and of course the instructor was, you know, very clear that the budget was a means. Um, but I recognize that that you know we're, we're there are ways where it is appropriate for our organization to operate in the ways that we operate. The thing that I think was most helpful for me was to understand the board's linkage to ownership, and then also from a staff perspective the importance of the principle of board holism because that gives us a clear direction. And that was the takeaway for me. I kind of echo John's comments, but I just want to add along. Initially, I thought it, it, it would be a magic wand, but it, you know, it's going to be a work in progress. I, I think every organization is unique, so we will have to find out our, our you know, solution. So thank you. Thank you both. Uh, and thank you, Kyra, for attending and making the time to go. And um, if you want to be the policy governance watchdog and say, hey, wait a minute, that doesn't align with it, then feel free to jump in any time. Uh, item 5C, we moved up to 2C. So we'll move to, uh, is there any other board education items that anybody wants to, before we move on? Sorry, I want to jump the gun. Uh, then item 6, emergent business. Any pressing emergent items that uh, have come up that we didn't have time to put on the agenda today or anything else? Okay. Uh, then item seven, we'll move to closing items, topics for the next meeting. Uh, Matt had circulated this leadership with intent document. I had a, ta a chance to go through it myself and I didn't bring my notes with me, but um, it was very good information in terms of how we stack up with some of this and what they're seeing in terms of board practices, et cetera. 
uh, and the role of how boards operate, diversity of boards. Uh, that was uh, a lot of information about that. Um, improving its own performance, you know, leadership, uh, cultural things. Uh, I think we'll probably have a fuller discussion about it next month. Um, and we may do a, we may do a PowerPoint. We may just do it as an FYI. But I think it's just a good opportunity to see how we stack up against what board source has found other boards do. I think from what I saw, my general impression is we, you know, are in pretty good shape. Uh, but again, um, we've. We're, we do a pretty good job of pointing out where we could do better, so I think there's always room for that. Uh, but we'll come back next month for that. Uh, any other, I think, uh, well, any other topics for the next meeting anybody wants to make sure we don't miss? Uh, we will bring the annual plan of work back up again uh, for further discussion next, next month as well. Anything else? Mike? I just pulled out our schedule and noticed ownership linkage is one thing that's on here for November. I mean, excuse me, I'm looking at November. Ownership linkage is for October and November and December. Um, is that something we're going to be discussing all these three months or? Yeah, I guess we've committed it in writing, so we are going to discuss it, aren't we? So yeah, we'll, we'll uh, yes. And I also see, <laughs> and I see in October, and only in October, the fourth quarter satisfa satisfaction and service report. Hmm. Well, let me look again. Um, Oh, excuse me. That's for the just for the committee, the service committee. Huh? So that is not a board. External relations. Uh, yeah, it's committee yeah. work. External relations. Yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, Prashant. Yeah, I, I saw it was summarized uh, in the CEO report uh, that the RTA didn't have a meeting, but I think receiving some regular updates, perhaps maybe at some point warrants a discussion. Um, so I don't know, it might not be the next meeting, but um, I think that's an emerging issue that we're gonna have to plan around uh, in a serious way, hopefully. If I might uh, elaborate on this uh, very brief uh, paragraph on the RTA, it's my understanding that the question of uh, should the RTA move forward, and if so, how and when, has uh, moved up to the elected leadership of the Metro Detroit area, sometimes known as the Big Four. So the, uh, the mayor of Detroit, uh, the county executives of Wayne and Oakland County, and the chair of the Macomb County Commission are um, having some discussions at their level about next steps for the RTA. Um, I'm honestly unsure how the board of the RTA figures into that conversation. Um, my, what I understand is when those political leaders uh, come to consensus, perhaps at that point the RTA's board will know how it can move forward. Um, uh, that said, if we'd like to invite one of our county reps, uh, we certainly could. Another option would be um, uh, Mr. Andy Labar, who's the chair of the uh, County Board of Commissioners, the Board of Commissioners recently asked their chair to participate in some of those higher level political meetings. Uh, so Andy may also have some information to share with us um, if we are interested in hearing that. I think there may be a chance that they may not have much to report. I, I simply don't know. Anybody else? Topics next meeting? Is your mic on? Mr. Labar. So, um, yeah, that's that's something we could put on the agenda. Thank you.
Okay? Others? Uh, then we'll move to item 7B, public comment. Any public comment? I don't see anybody. We'll close that. Item 7C, board assessment of the meeting. Any particular comments anybody wants to comment on about what we just did? Mr. Cooper. So again, I think it's wonderful that we have a adopted budget for the coming year. Uh, I think it was a very productive uh, meeting, uh, well run, and when I look at what time it is, uh, efficiently and effectively. Uh, there was a line of conversation that um, I find intriguing. And that line of conversation uh, and it's not about the subject, it's not about the uh, rider amenities. But the conversation about that was, well, we heard from a board member or two or three, and it's only when we all speak through as a board. That is very, very much uh, an issue for me because it feels like a straitjacket. Only if we are all in a unanimous agreement that something matters, that we get 10 votes and then we adjust something, so we're still a board, we still have individual interest and expertise, and that we have a right to establish what the board action is by a vote of the majority. It doesn't have to be unanimous. We already heard from three members about a specific issue. I suspect if somebody wanted to push forward, whether it's a end statement or a policy statement to compel work in that regard, we could have a vote. But uh, what I wanted to do was to frame the issue and the conversation about the role that each of us plays. And I signed on, uh, if you will, to policy governance, understanding that it is absolutely uh, wrong for each board member to reach into staff with its own individual agenda. But I think that the, the pendulum is somewhere between 10 independent board members reaching into the organization as opposed to requiring that all 10 of us be on the same page on a particular matter, be it policy, be it ends, be it means. So I just, uh, you know, in terms of assessing the meeting, this is my reaction to a line of conversation that I felt um, it was what this piece is on the agenda for to say, are we sure that we're all signed on? Not to interfere with the staff as individuals, but that we have an obligation and we're, we're uh, not always going to see things exactly through the same lens, and it's not always going to be 10-0, and that's healthy. So that's my assessment of the meeting. I thought it was effective, efficient, we got a lot done, and we framed some items for future conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I don't want the phrase board holism or speaking with one voice to mean everything has to be unanimous. Uh, and if you got that impression, thank you for saying that so we can clarify it. Uh, no, I don't think we also have to say 10 nothing. let's go get that piece of information that we want. My, my point was if we want that to develop into action on the part of the staff in terms of ridership amenities just to go with what we were talking about, um, several board members have said something. My, and this is probably, and thank you for raising that, probably the next time that comes up, my role as the chair will be to say, you know, we've heard from several board members, are others in agreement that, you know, just maybe by some kind of informal indication, body language, coughing, you know, whatever, blinking twice, uh, that this is a piece of information that could be vital to shaping our ends policies, our budget in the future, and what we want the staff to concentrate on. Um, we heard from several individuals, and we know it's important to them, um, I would like to hear it too. I mean, and I probably should have said that, but if others want to say, yeah, that's important to us, then we can direct the staff um, to your point that one individual shouldn't say, hey, you know, go do this and go chase this down, you know, well, well put. Um, but that's why we had the, the discussion. And my point was, instead of saying to the staff, hey, you know, you need to give us more information about this, that's probably the, f the conversation should be framed to say, you know, in the future, you know, I didn't. I didn't feel comfortable with this item on the uh, on the budget because I asked for this and I didn't get it. Uh, I would like to hear what others think about this particular item, ridership amenities, what that's for, what goes into that. Um, you know, you raised it. You had some other support for it. We probably could have moved that piece of information forward to 
to Matt and John so they could provide that for us in the future and that may shape future budgets. Uh, they'll respond you know, uh, accordingly and, and we'll move on. So that's, that's probably a process question. We won't get it right the first month or two, but, uh, but that's, that's a process improvement we can do in the future. So thank you for raising that. Any others that we want, uh, Matt? Thank you. Minor point. Um, uh, asking for clarification about a budget item. What is this item? What is this intended for? Um, just to be to be clear, uh, I think we will respond to any individual request for that level of information um, as a just a part of clarifying the budget to individual board members. Um, Perhaps where we erred is not understanding some part of the question properly. Sending the answer back to everyone uh, might have been an opportunity for us to improve as well. Um, uh, asking for more information, I, I, I don't interpret that as something that needs a vote. Uh, um, a request to change something or to take some action, yes, that, that might take a vote. And it does not need to be unanimous. It's, that's my understanding. I just wanted to clarify that. It's helpful. Thank you. Anybody else? We'll move on then to item 7D adjournment. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Roger, supported by Jillian. All those in favor of adjournment, raise your hand. Any opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>